How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Finally got a little back from vacation. Uh, we were up in Oregon on the Deschutes River uh, fly fishing for big red side uh, rainbows. I caught a pile of them. Oh, I caught a bunch uh, that were 18 to 20 inches and then a few over that even. Uh, we did really well and uh, had a great time. Uh, you know, uh, I go up there every year for, well, anywhere from 10 days to two weeks. Depends on how the fishing is and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, if anybody out there who fly fishes, lives in the area or whatever, uh, uh, if you never fish the salmon fly hatch uh, up there in the Deschutes, uh, it's an incredible time. And uh, all dry fly fishing with really big flies, and it's uh, just a blast uh, having them crash it on that. Anyway, uh, you know, you, uh, anyway, so you're, you know, welcome to join me. Uh, like I said, I've been fishing it for over 30 years uh, at that time, and uh, I've got the spots down pretty good, you might say. <laughs> anyway, we got a few things to share you, uh, with you. Uh, I, I uh, received this, uh, this was a few weeks ago. Um, sorry, Jeff, uh, Jeff Elliott, uh, he has a, YouTube channel, Practical Renaissance. There's a sticker. And uh, I have a spot right there, right below Keith's. And then uh, we're going to stick that on there. Uh, thanks, Jeff. He has a uh, YouTube channel also, like I said. And uh, he wrote me a little note and everything. And he also uh, picked up one of my scribes. Uh, so thanks, Jeff. And I'll put his link uh, to his channel uh, down below if you're uh, interested to take a look at what he's doing over there. And uh, he has a, let's see, oh, I think he, uh, he has a small grizzly, grizzly machines and stuff, and uh, does a little bit of small shop stuff and production stuff. So, thanks, Jeff. Uh, thanks for the sticker. Uh, I'll put it up here. So while I was up in uh, Oregon, I went over and I'm only camping about, uh, oh, it's not really very far, but sure, long drive. <laughs> type of thing. Very twisty roads uh, over to Don Cossett's place. And I went over and visited Don uh, for a day and uh, or half a day. And I wanted to look at his uh, lagoon. He's been having a lot of problems uh, with the uh, VFD and some of the other uh, things going on there. Uh, so I uh, stopped in to see Don and we we looked at the VFD, tried a few things and, and uh, you know, came up with some uh, pathways to figuring out more what's uh, issues, and he talked to a couple other guys, uh, Brian Block, I think was one, and somebody else, and uh, I think uh, after I left there, I think they got it sorted out a bit, so it's, uh, he got the uh, spindle motor running, so I haven't talked to Don since I got back, but uh, I have to give him a call, so uh, good going, Don, uh, good to see that you got that running. Anyway, we did a little tool trade, too, and uh, it's kind of funny because I have both ends of the tools <laughs> still. Uh, I'm going to pass this along to Don. This is a 40, 40 taper to 7 8 so 14 for a boring head to go on. So he can, uh, his machines use a 40 taper, so that would be uh, pretty handy for him, a nice arbor there. And uh, he uh, passed me a uh, inch and a quarter end mill holder, R8. So that would be uh, pretty nice. I, I don't know if I have anything right this minute to go in there, but uh, probably have to come up with something, I guess. But anyway, so that's a nice end mill holder. Thanks, Don, for the trade. Uh, picked up a item on eBay that came while I was away, and uh, we'll spin you around and take a look at it. Picked this up on eBay. The case is in immaculate condition. Uh, as you can see what it says on there. A little stare at item. It's a, a six inch. Actually, it goes up to seven. Uh, but I think they call it a six inch. Uh, vernier height gauge. Uh, it had all the, all the pieces. It, uh, it does have somebody's name on it, but that's okay. I don't mind that stuff. Uh, for the as far as the envelope goes, and it had, uh, 
So that's, and it has this extra one in there, and I'm not sure what that goes to exactly. I don't think it's with this. It's for clamping on like to here, right? But anyway, it's in immaculate condition, uh, basically like brand new. And what I wanted one for is be, being so short, uh, I want something uh, it's a little easier to use when I'm doing dovetail cutters. Uh, even though it's a vernier, but that's not that big a deal for me. Uh, so, not a digital one or anything. But it's a beautiful shape. So that's that's pretty nice. Uh, came up pretty nice, fine, uh, and it was. I think it. I think it was about a hundred dollars. Uh, I paid for it, so uh, I wasn't. Uh, that wasn't. I didn't think that was too bad. Uh, I know it, people don't like verniers. Some of them people today with all the digital stuff, but it was in such great shape, uh, and uh, from other stuff I was looking at here and there, you know. It was very reasonable priced, I think, or fairly priced. And it comes with the rod um, tool, you might say, uh, for reaching into holes or and such. So that's adjustable. I feel pretty cool. I'm uh, pretty happy with that. I can't get it back in. And the case is literally like brand new. So I don't think it was very used uh, very much at all. All right, I got uh, Jeff's uh, Practical Resonance sticker put up. And uh, thanks again, Jeff. Also, uh, last night, I went over 8,000 on subscribers. So uh, thank you to all the subscribers out there for stopping in on the channel and seeing what I'm doing in my shop. Uh, I do appreciate it, and uh, just will keep on keeping on here, as uh, Harold says, uh, down in Texas. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I should check out Harold at Amateur Red Amateur Redneck Workshop. I think it is. Anyway, uh, he has a fun. I'll put his link up. Harold's great to watch. He's a funny guy. He always has a little. Uh, story or redneck kind of tale to tell uh, on his videos which are very interesting I, I enjoy it. it gives you a good good chuckle and so he's doing the, some crazy stuff in his shop sometimes and uh, he's working on his mold his injection molding uh, rig uh, to make knobs and stuff uh, which is uh, really quite interesting I've never done any of that myself and uh, I, th I find it uh, interesting watching him uh, uh, deal with the problems he has and uh, melting down milk bottles and making plastic and stuff. So, uh, pretty interesting. So, check out Harold over there. Uh, at uh, Harold Waters at the Amateur Redneck Workshop. So, uh, anyway, uh, so I uh, get past 8,000 uh, and I'm going to start uh, do a little project here uh, with this video. Uh, something I have to get done. I've been having, ever since I had my uh, Logan lathe, it came with a uh, quick open close uh, for the closer. Uh, and uh, it's always had, uh, when you, sometimes when you close it, the end, uh, the handle end uh, vibrates horribly. But then sometimes when you close it, it's perfect. You know, like zero run out. You know, it's like it's bent or something. So I finally uh, decided to take it apart and uh, take a look at it to figure out what what the heck is wrong with it and uh, because I'm using it a lot now if uh, especially with the scribe making the scribes so I'm, I'm making another bat I'm, I want to make another batch of scribes so I have some for the bash and whatever I anybody else uh, wants to get one uh, well, in a few weeks here I'll have some ready but anyway uh, so I'm, I decided to figure figure out and fix hopefully fix a uh, What's wrong with this? Uh, call it closer. And so uh, let's go. Uh, I have it all apart already. I didn't film any of that, uh, but I'm gonna show you what I found out, and we'll hopefully come up with a solution here. 
So uh, thanks a lot, you guys, and we'll swing around and take a look at it. So this is the uh, quick closer for the Logan uh, for the collets. I kind of slipped it back together real quick just to give you a, a rough idea of what it looks like uh, before I took it apart. Now we're going to slip this on here. This is the quick closing handle. Okay, and then this is a collar that goes on 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 here. Uh, there's one other uh, guard ring that slips over this part here for these arms. That's just a sheet metal guard. Uh, so the nut comes off. And I've taken measurements on that. Uh, this comes off now. This has obviously been uh, worked on in the past. Uh, uh, these these you know these aren't factory welds. It's a, let's just say that. Uh, so uh, somebody's either reman manufactured this or uh, had to work on it because it broke or something, or maybe the handle wasn't long enough. Uh, this has got this weird plastic handle on here, but it spins, but it doesn't come off. So I don't know how they did that exactly, but anyway, took one of those uh, acrylic uh, balls. Anyway, so, so this handle goes around this bearing, and it has adjust, adjustment uh, pins uh, in here. So we're taking that off, taking all these things off. Uh, this this part here, is the, this part here is the uh, cam action. These are spring loaded, so these are actually over that. So when you pull on it, it comes out to here. You pull when you engage it and pull on it this comes out to here and rides right there now these are all hardened pieces now this is a this is the part that locks in to the end of the spindle there's a nut on the end of the spindle and these little dogs right here uh, engage in that and then this pin engages in any one of these holes you know, that are in here there's a pin right here that you release into a hole that's when you get the tension just right for releasing the collet or when it's when it snaps in tight so you uh, can adjust it and such and that turns half turn and lock it open that slides off and this slides off now this let's see I had it loose has these three pit there's three holes uh, for set screws to go into now it was out here you see there's a bunch of locking marks so I'm gonna see if I can put it back into the holes the original holes it wasn't in there so we'll see what we can do uh, it might have to do with the length of this tube and how many threads you'll get grabbed uh, on the collet uh, for pulling and everything it this Anyway, uh, I don't know why it exactly was out here, but we, we, we'll find that out. So what I've done is I took the tube, and we're going to take it over to the uh, Anderson uh, balance, uh, balancer and use it to roll and measure uh, and if there's any kind of run out or if the, this tube is bent. So what I have here is the this Anderson rollers. Uh, you now this is for balancing but it's very similar uh, basically to the right rollers uh, that uh, Keith Fenner makes. Now I actually have a box over there <laughs> that has my right rollers in there <laughs> that I haven't built yet. I just got those uh, a few weeks a month ago and I just haven't had time to do it so uh, that's gonna be a project for the summer here to build a set of the right rollers. But anyway uh, this uh, but I picked up this uh, balancer so we're using it now I've cleaned all the bearings and re-lubricated everything I've cleaned the wheels with a little scotch bright this thing is uh, very very nice and ex expands and uh, works uh, very well so what I've got here is I've got this set up and it's kind of right over the rollers so it's going to tell us if this is round or not and now this is just a thousandths indicator and Getting next to um, not even a half a thousand uh, movement there. 
So uh, only a few tenths. So that's pretty good. Uh, one thing I want to say too is having a set of these contact points, these sterets, this is a 25R set, can be very handy in the shop when you all of a sudden need a different kind of point. So I took the, I removed the point on that, that that's an SPI indicator. It had one of these little kind of, it has a little ball in the end there. I don't think the ball turns, it's just a fixed round point. Uh, so you have a bunch of different, uh, from flat to mushroom heads. Now I have a small mushroom on there, a uh, little, little ball point. These are sharp points. These are domes, all different lengths. Oh, I have a couple of these, same like that. And a little needle one to reach in. Now this one's spring-loaded. But having a, a little set like this uh, comes in very, very handy for averaging out a reading or anything like that. Or you need a bigger contact area or something. So this works pretty good. There's there's little scratches and things. I did throw this in the lathe and gave this a quick little polish just to knock any uh, burrs and things that might be on it. Because there are dings in it. So anyway, so we have just a few tents uh, right there. Now I'm just going to move this down. And we're just, uh, we'll just kind of measure this along. Now I, I don't have to set this to zero each time. All I have to do is watch it. I'm looking for deviation. So right there I have a one thousandths deviation. One, about one and a half there. A 1.2, 1 1.5 to 1.5. So about one and a half. That's, that's very close to where I was. Now there's a bunch of scoring in here, so I'm going to skip over that a little bit. About two, two there, about two thousands. That's about one and a half. And back over here where these wheels are, it's probably, hopefully zero or close to it. Just a couple tenths, just like at the other end. So there is a, a couple thousandths uh, deviation in here, and I'll, one other thing I did notice that there is an imbalance in in the shaft also. So if you just give it a little roll, here, we'll just give it a little roll, and we'll give it a sharpie mark here. That that seems to be about the top, and we'll just give another little roll. Time it didn't it's, uh, down there. We'll say top. That's number two. That was number one. Oh, so number two is almost at the top again. You should do this several several times. So when you're ever you're balancing or doing any measurements like this just to yeah, that's about the same uh, about 15 or so 30 degrees off so that's number three see how it rolls over yeah number three and comes back so there is a definite imbalance in this tube 
uh, the one or two thousandths uh, off could be the what parts cause it, but, but really that's very minor for the amount of vibration I get <laughs> uh, from the handle sticking out here on the end. Uh, you know, the, the collet goes in this end here, or screws in, uh, and uh, out here is the uh, closer part. So there is the slight imbalance, and there is a maybe a maximum of a couple thousands right in here, so it's hardly really anything. But of course, all those things are cumulative uh, and causing problems. Let's go look at the other parts. So we're going to look at a couple things here. We'll go run through the parts. So this slips on here, and I'm seeing little to no play. You can hear it. A couple thousands. This is locked and turns at the same as this. Uh, when it's engaged, this is all locked and spinning at the same RPM. There's no relative motion. This piece goes on the same way. Uh, very nice fit. And it's locked to the shaft anyway with the set three set screws. I can't get it off, right? And these two are locked together also with that pin, that lock pin. So all these spin together in the same relative motion. Uh, they're balancing, there's a little imbalance because of this pin, but that's minor. It's close to the center, so it's a, not a lot. For the amount of vibration I get, it's a lot, a real lot. So these little differences are minor, comparatively speaking. And then the ring, of course, that's inherently balanced, even uh, even with a set screw. And we've already talked about the minor deviation in the shaft. So this is the part here that slides and has the bearing around it. This is the handle, and then it has the two set screws that go in here that you can you can adjust. Uh, for the tension of that bearing on there. Now this is where all the vibration seems to exist. So we're going to measure this. See what this is uh, diameter wise. And so we're at 1.566678 yeah. 1.5669 Five six five six six nine yeah so we're within a couple tenths uh, of being round and this is all hardened and ground uh, it's a pretty nice piece uh, there's no grooves I mean no wear you can't feel any wear there's a little discoloration from the bronze right running on it so now we're going to get down to the, looking at these halves these bearing halves well yeah, right off the bat right there in the middle. I'm going to use my scribe as a pointer like everyone else is doing. That's an excellent to tool of choice. <laughs> Thanks for everybody using their scribes, actually. Uh, right here in the middle, there's a dark spot where it's been making a contact. And over here, there's a little roughness there. But, and there's very little, there's some wear showing, touching here, out here on the ends. But not very much. So I'm thinking that that when that's on there, this it doesn't have the same radius as the piece it rides on, which we now know is 1.566 roughly. And it's making maybe just contact here. So so when you when it when you are uh, using this, if it's in a different position or the shift or something, it causes it maybe to vibrate in here. Because this is not the same, it looks like. Now we're going to hold those on there. Now you can see that there's gaps between the ends. You see that? There's a gap. It feels like it's touching, but when I hold it now, I can feel I can move it up and down in line with the gaps, the split line, but side to side I can't move it. So right there, we have uh, a con 
a concentricity issue is that you're making contact in the middle but not on the ends so that means the radius of that circle of the board circle is not the same as the radius of the piece it's th the piece should be right that it's writing on so that's probably where all the vibration is so what I'm going to do what I've decided to do is I, I now I can clamp that in a six jaw chuck just like that just put it up in there and it holds it really nice three jaws on each side pushes it together holds it uh, just beautifully and I can then bore that to the proper diameter now we're going to go over there to lay then we're going to put it in there and we're going to measure that to see what it's uh, actually what is the diameter now so we can figure out what how we're going to bore it are we going to leave a gap in there we're we going to put them up tight and then make a gap later you know what are we going to do so we're going to put them up in there tight and measure it uh, to see what see what this is maybe this hole's not even rounded so we're looking at the logan lathe and this is the uh, six jaw chuck so we're just going to take those and you know i don't think it really matters which way they go they look pretty pretty even we're gonna set that in there so it's flat against the back of the chuck or the face of the chuck and just kind of cinch that up so that holds it extremely well in there everything's nice and even you can't uh, can't quite do this with a three jaw uh, and even it would be a little bit hard to do with a four jaw but the six jaw really grabs it nice and puts even pressure so let's uh we'll measure uh 90 degrees uh from the from the cut line see what we get So we're one five three ninety five. Now I'm not going to measure. Well, I don't feel a ridge or anything. I could measure right along, but I'm going to measure just right next to the cut line, so I don't have that any kind of ridge or anything causing issues. Okay, 1583. 1583. So now it's larger by a lot. About 20 thousandths, right? So we're we're really large in this direction, you know, with the with the cut line, which that's why there's no wear, but we're small in this direction. So that's why this makes contact first in this direction. What are we gonna do? It's too big here and it's too small here. So that makes it kind of hard to go in there and bore this to the right size because they're way too big here this way. 